cellular standards, opportunities, and challenges. Anyway, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steve Hauser, and I am glad to have the opportunity to talk today. Uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm, in fact, I'm going to have talk about some of the things that uh, Kirk has already spoken about, uh, particularly some of the OMA standards. But uh, I will uh, just talk in a different way about the same things. So uh, my name is Steve Hauser, and I work for Nokia Siemens Networks. I've been working on E911 and commercial LBS positioning for about 12 years now. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'm going to start off by speaking a few words about the last uh, 12 years or so of positioning uh, improvements, and the standards particularly. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the more sophisticated hybridization that's occurring with all location. Uh, then I'm going to talk, you know, present some examples of some new call positioning approaches. And then I'm going to talk about discovered uh, supple servers and uh, uh, extending the OMA protocols to support some of the new indoor positioning methods. And then I'll have a few closing comments. So if we look at the, you know, at least my career in uh, location, is that in the very early days, in sort of early 2000s, we were just talking about cell ID based positioning. And, we, and there weren't that many standards at the time. We were extending uh, protocols like INAP to retrieve cell IDs during a call setup. There was, you know, we had, you know, we, we were ex extracting cell ID from devices using the SIM application toolkit. And there was the, you know, the very early uh, FCC phase one positioning going on, which was basically cell ID based. And it was all control plane in those days. Uh, and then, largely driven by the E911 uh, phase two standards, suddenly accurate uh, positioning came to the forefront. And we were sort of forced into doing high accuracy positioning uh, for E911. And once again, it was control plane. It was, uh, it was using GPS and uh, uh, uplink time difference of arrival to get the high accuracy positioning. And then during the 2000s, we sort of brought that same technology, which had been largely put in place for E911. We pulled it into commercial LBS. And uh, there was various standards at the time. Uh, you know, uh, originally, there were some of the Qualcomm standards for user plane, the V1, V2. There was the OMA supple. There was some uh, sort of more proprietary solutions for carriers using IDEN, which were largely user plane. But we started using mobile terminated and mobile originated uh, positioning. So you know we had applications going onto devices as well as uh, uh, you know which were requesting their own location, as well as uh, servers in the network requesting location. Uh, and then towards, you know, you know, in the last, uh, I don't know, three or so years, we started to see, with particularly with SUPL2, more advanced standards-based uh, positioning being deployed. And SUPL2.0, particularly from the OMA, has, in, you know, standardized a, a wide range of services. Uh, very few of them have actually been deployed yet. Most of them are very much aligned with what was in the content of SUPL1.0. But uh, uh, SUPL 2.0 introduced the concepts of using user plane for emergency and for periodic and triggered uh, location uh, within the standards. And what we're doing now is just looking at a wider, you know, a sort of super hybrid of all positioning uh, capabilities is what's going forward as we, you know, we're going beyond the terrestrial and the satellite positioning. We're making use of all the information ava available, whether it's uh, uh, Wi-Fi, and in the future, much more on beacons and anything, any other information that is available to aid uh, location. So I think the key thing here is that even though originally, you know, a lot of the concepts originally come in from a proprietary or vendor-specific background, over time they all they all tend to, to move towards the standards approach, and this is to allow carriers to have multi, you know, multi, multiple vendors and multiple solutions, and it means that there's less. Uh, risk for the operators and for business cases when there are standards. So this is a 
sort of diagram NSN always shows, but it's basically pulling together all the different satellite positionings and mapping them into, well, all the different positioning technologies which are currently deployed and mapping them into how they map uh, into the FCC requirements. And we sort of think as, you know, where are possible we use satellite positioning, but then there's the trilaterations uh, solutions for uh, using terrestrial radio like OTDOA and F AFLT, uh, we've got Wi-Fi, and they work in different environments uh, better, and satellite obviously is great for remote areas, uh, and then as you come through the different urban and then into indoors, there's different positioning technologies, and this is just short showing the, the, you know, the current positioning technologies. So if, so if we look a little bit further, and the focus of this uh, conference is uh, indoor positioning, and these are just some ideas and you know of how we can extend the current systems to you know take account of information that may be available for indoor positioning. So if you, for example, from your mobile phone, if you could scan the barcode of a product on a shelf and it was known where that was in the Super Walmart, for example, you have a location. Uh, you, could you could photograph uh, an object in a museum or just anywhere, and if it was recognized by the system, uh, you could have a location associated with it. Um, in, in a warehouse, you have some very big warehouses, and you just don't know where you are. There might be some kind of barcode or some kind of system to know where you are. Uh, and similar uh, in lots of office buildings, we have uh, lots of office buildings where all the floors look the same, the buildings look the same, but you do have these identifiers around the, the office such as uh, a work cube identifier, and that means something to the system. If you could photograph that or somehow scan it in through your mobile device, you could uh, identify a position from it. So the thing is that the, you know, the sort of legacy protocols didn't support uh, carrying this additional information, whether it be photographs or barcodes or whatever. Uh, and uh, with these positioning, you know, with this kind of information, it's very related to local knowledge, uh, to a building or whatever. Uh, and it also requires sort of extensions beyond the existing standardized protocols. So I'm going to look at a couple of uh, enablers to support indoor positioning and uh, new in indoor positioning techniques. So I'm going to go over uh, what Kirk earlier mentioned about uh, discovered supple servers. And supple, uh, supple servers are, are, are part of the supple architecture and they're the, the server side and, and they rely on communication with a device. And the discovered supple servers are generally targeted, well, are intended to be targeted at specific uh, vicinities or specific buildings. And uh, they can be used uh, to locate devices. Uh, let me just have a breather. Uh, uh, so, so they, they contain additional information about that vicinity where the device is. So, uh, and procedures have been specified uh, to discover the uh, discovered supple servers and to get authorization from the sort of home supple server uh, so that a device can use a discovered supple server. And a discovered ser uh, server uh, can be selected based on numerous criteria, uh, but the, the obvious ones are the, the access type, the actual location, and the, the, you know, the service type. Now, uh, discu you know, uh, discovered supple servers were originally a uh, supple 3.0 feature, which is the, the very latest version of supple, which is uh, being standardized, but there's been a, an attempt or a successful attempt to to port it back into a supple 2.0 context uh, within the context of supple 2.1. And supple 2.0, you know, and the reason for that is that there's, there's been uh, deployments of supple 2.0 at the moment, and people are concerned that supple 3.0 is just somewhat in the future, and putting this capability into supple 2 
uh, will, uh, in, you know, in, uh, speed up its in, its its inter inter uh, introduction into networks. So, discovered supple servers. The the opportunities. Uh, so obviously the you know the, you know the, these vicinity-based positioning, we can do this in in a, a mall, a warehouse, an, air, an airport's terminal, university campus, or an office complex. That's the sort of uh, buildings that we're tar uh, we're targeting for discovered supple servers. Uh, and. These supple servers contain uh, specific local data to aid positioning in those locations. So local sensors, beacons, map information. And uh, the discovered supple server can use standard or non-standard positioning technologies. Now the concept here is, uh, is potentially commer you know, commercialized by having maybe third party supple server providers who are dedicated to indoor positioning for specific buildings. So for example, uh, you know, the operator of a mall or the operator of a warehouse uh, could provide uh, some kind of supple server type information if they're big enough or they could outsource it to a third party. Uh, a similar concept is the companies which uh, deploy indoor coverage. There's companies, I think Andrews and there's several other companies which are out there who are putting in uh, uh, systems to improve the coverage in buildings and provide capacity in buildings. And maybe that kind of company could look into indoor positioning as well. One of the advantages of having a third party is that every different carrier wouldn't have to have their own uh, 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 supple servers or discovered supple servers and have to manage all that da data and keep it up to date. The other thing is that a lot of indoor locations are actually, you know, might contain confidential or, s or even s uh, information, even in regards to the layout of the building or the contents of the building. But if, but if you had a single third party with the, the you know, appropriate uh, security, security uh, uh, they could go in and do the uh, do you know I you know uh, do the uh, oh, sorry. So the challenges with discovered supple servers are, you know, this is a common theme: is the amount of data involved with these new positioning technologies. If you, for example, have to keep. Uh, information on all the contents of a super Walmart and where all those uh, products are in a big building, then uh, just key, keeping that up to date is very challenging. Uh, there's also the standard security and subscriber privacy issues, and uh, but that will just lead to the appropriate uh, uh, service level agreements if there are third parties involved in gathering this information. And, that's, and there's also the issue that a, a particular discovered uh, supple server uh, could get overloaded in certain circumstances and there just have to be some arrangement between uh, the home carriers and the discovered supple server uh, operator to uh, manage the request throughput. Okay, so that was uh, discovered supple servers. Now I was going to say a few words about uh, uh, the location positioning protocol, which is another enabler. So the advantage of the, uh, the location positioning protocol is that it's been standardized by 3GPP in a fashion whereby uh, it can be extended by other uh, standards bodies and the key thing about the LPP protocol is it runs directly between the device and a server. And what I'm showing here is a protocol stack from uh, the 3GPP for, for uh, LTE. But uh, the key thing is that it doesn't relay, you know, rely on uh, 
special protocols at, you know, on every entity on the end-to-end -end link. It's a user plane uh, type protocol, so it's between the device and the server. And, this, and it's been set up in a way that you can add extensions to it uh, in a standardized fashion. And those, those uh, ex extens extensions allow the, uh, the device and the server to compare com you know, capabilities for different types of positioning methods and then to pass information between each other. Now, the OMA has taken that 3GPP standard and uh, developed extensions. And the advantage of this is that the, uh, these extensions have been made for a range of uh, positioning protocols, including those for legacy systems like GSM and UMTS. Uh, but it also allows uh, you know, uh, wireless LAN and WiMAX and DSL and cable type information to be uh, passed over the LPPE protocol. Uh, to allow the maximum amount of information that could be used for positioning. So there are a few challenges with the LPPE implementations. Uh, one of the first ones is that there's so many choices and options, it's going to be challenging if the market's left to itself to just come up with compatible sets of positioning methods and, and uh, support it within these protocols. So in many ways, it's going to have to be some carriers are going to have to define some profiles on this is what we expect in our network, uh, both on our server and our device devices. Otherwise, you'll end up with uh, ev everything being incompatible. You know, there'll be some devices which support, I don't know, uh, Wi-Fi positioning and the server will only support beacons or something. There'll be some mix, you know, some incompatible mixes. Uh, so the carriers do have a little bit of control, partic partic particularly the bigger ones. Uh, however, smaller carriers, they often get their devices uh, and they, you know, they can't control their devices. They're often on the open market. So there's still this issue of maybe the industry or some standards bodies need to define some very clear profiles of what's, you know, different layers of uh, p uh, positioning capabilities. The other issue is just as more and more positioning technologies come available and are supported in these protocols, uh, you know, there's more data to manage and, you know, just lots, you know, just lots of more capabilities to support and, uh, we, you know, there's got to be some m management of the complexity of the solutions. So to summarize, uh, there's many new posi uh, indoor positioning technologies uh, coming and are here. Uh, many require local information on the local uh, buildings. Uh, and I presented two examples to help enable new indoor positioning technologies. There's the discovered supple servers and there's the LPP extensions. And both of these are part of the OMA location standards. And that's the end of my presentation.